Uh, we are live on the internet, just like that. Wow. I know. <laughs> it's, it's magic. It is. That we can broadcast to dozens or thousands of people simultaneously. So I hope they're all watching. All of them. They we, should be. Yes, millions of people. <laughs> oh, or one day, maybe, right? It depends. See, if you become the uh, the swim school you know, empire that you're dreaming of, people will go back to this and be like, oh, see, that's when she had you know, one <laughs> school in West Palm. I just want to make an impact. And that's it. That'll be the, you know. Just like your company's making a huge impact. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Pool fences. Um, so I know that you started in a different direction, right? You went to University of Tampa right over there. I did. I went yes. there once for um, my friend's band played mm -hmm. at a, a soccer game, which is kind of weird. They had like a whatever. So I, I went on their tour. They rented because they got paid too much money for the, the gig. So they wanted to look like they were a big band, so they rented a tour bus, mm -hmm. and we all piled on the tour bus to make it look like they had fans in an entourage, <laughs> you know, because they got this Saw huge stage. Check. Yeah. <laughs> so they had enough money they could afford, like, this bus, and we, we rolled over there, and so my one experience with the University of Tampa is watching my friend's band play at a soccer field, um, and it was cool, though. Did you get to go inside it? I just went to the soccer field. Oh. Yeah. It the, was, the school's just gorgeous. It, all the minarets, I mean... It's amazing. It I, just it, it it Henry Plant brought in the the railroads into Florida, and, and and him and his wife they went and they decorated each room supposedly in a different theme because it used to be a hotel, I believe. And okay. So much history there. That's it's really cool. really really cool. Next time you're in Tampa, you want to go through oh, the University of Tampa. Plant Hall. Yeah, it's a beautiful school, but I have not been back. So is Henry in a while. Plant different from Henry Flagler? I'm. Yes. Okay. He no, Henry Flagler. Okay, I don't know where I got. It's called Plant Hall. That's so what it is. Henry Flagler. Henry yes. Flagler. And I'm Plant Hall. sorry. That's yes. Okay. I thought maybe it was wow. Some other nope. Henry same exact. Okay. Same, same exact. Yes. Same guy. Yes. Fine. This is what it is. Sorry. So you, so <laughs> yes. you went there. Obviously, nothing to do with aquatics, right? Actually, I did. Yeah. I I was on the swim team over okay. at University of Tampa. So. Um, I started swimming competitively um, for Teaneck Swim Club when I was five years old. I did my swim lessons there and learned to swim. And at five, I five and a half, I joined the swim team. So 19 years ago. Sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Just 19 years ago. Yes. Um, I graduated at college in 1999. So yeah. 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 yeah, right there. yeah. Math <laughs> Perfect. matches up. Yes. Yeah. So I joined the swim team, but it was summer, because I grew up in New Jersey. It was four miles outside New York City um, from George Washington Bridge. So um, I was doing my competitive swimming in the summers only. And I made the private swim team, New Jersey Waves, and um, I had to drop out because I was suffering with my grades in school. So I couldn't swim again until I went to high school. Mm -hmm. But in high school, we didn't have a pool at our uh, at our high school, okay. so we went to another high school's pool. But if it was snowing and the bus couldn't drive there, we couldn't make it. If the other school had a swim meet, we couldn't gotcha. practice. If we, if you know, if the janitor wasn't there, he couldn't open the pool for us. And um, so, so we that, didn't have too much. And and swimming, even though we think of it as a summer sport but in high school we're, we're, we're swimming in the winter time right and that's different than florida here sure so i was a walk-on swimmer to university of tampa so you don't use the pool in high school if the moon was aligned right and the season yes. was good and yes. it was exactly 76.4 degrees and, yeah okay and you know big thing with my instruction growing up then mm -hmm. was it was like kick faster harder harder and you know and breathe and just it was all about our speed but we forgot to focus on the technique and make sure we really knew what we do are doing mm -hmm. so i wish i could go back i could have learned the, all the technique to make my stroke so much smoother um because i probably would have stayed a swimmer in college i only swam for the first year gotcha. year and a half and then like most college students, yeah. I needed a job. I needed to make money, and so, I was I was so to go to taking eighteen credits a semester, going right. to college. I managed somehow to graduate 
six months uh, or a, a semester early oh, wow. so I could get married there you go. <laughs> and awesome. start working and making money. And I was in the car business sure. um, so for many you, years. So you graduated a degree in? Psychology and criminology. Okay. So what was your plan? I wanted to be um, an insurance fraud investigator. That's very specific. Yes. Okay. Or a pharmaceutical rep. Or a pharmaceutical. Those are very different. Yeah. And also very two very different. Yeah. Um, but I was told I need it really for pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. Um, I was told I need it to um, have a lot more business to business um, experience. So I became a management trainee with Enterprise Rent a Car. Okay. Great company. Great training program that they put all um, their employees through, and they, you know, they promote from within, which is a great concept. Um, so, why didn't you do insurance fraud investigation? As glamorous as that sounds, <laughs> I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't pick such an amazing life <laughs> as insurance fraud investigation. I guess I just needed that little bit more passion, and I, mean, I, I, I wanted to. Insurance fraud investigation. You know, it, it's it's kind of interesting because people don't realize like. That you know, all the lightning strikes are recorded. Okay. So, so people say lightning. So lightning hit, and now they're putting a false claim in. Right. So uh, there's ways of tracking it, and I think most people. Uh, now I need to cancel that email I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And again, we're going back only 19 years, right. so uh, sure who knows what the technology is? But yeah. that was my immediate thought. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. But I had that great opportunity with Enterprise, and I worked at the Tampa airport mm-hmm. um, doing their rental, and you know, got promoted into their um, resale of their used vehicles. Okay. And I learned so much just about business and um, people. And different personalities um, from that experience. Um, Again, I wanted to do a little bit more. So I left Enterprise. I did automotive advertising for a little while. Um, Company I was working for didn't work out. They decided to close their doors. And I went to a Bucks game that night. And uh, the guy sitting with me at the, uh, uh, in, in the, club area that sure. we were in he owned the jaguar dealership over in tampa bay okay so i said he goes i don't hire i don't fire well i think he fires but i don't hire people but come see us and so within the next few days i walked in there and i started selling jaguars and it was a great dealership because we you didn't have to uh, each salesperson did their own finance as well so you didn't have to go to the finance manager right. so it was a great opportunity but my uh my husband moved over to West Palm, um, well, to open a restaurant in Palm Beach. Um, and so I left selling cars in Tampa and came over to West Palm and worked for Palm Beach Motor Cars for many years until 2008 when the recession hit. And I, I have two kids. I have a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. And so in the car business, I, you know, working commission only, you know, I... I it's it's a little tough being a mom, but I and, and giving me my kids all that attention. Um, but in two thousand and eight, I left. Uh, it no one was buying luxury automobiles, um, and so I decided to do private jet charters. Okay. And then six months later, General Motors decided to fly private to Congress. So then CEOs of companies didn't want to be flying right. private. They had a bad yeah. image. It, yeah. Yeah. And I looked so, into it once. Huh? I looked into it once. Flying private? Yeah. Doing the private jet charter thing. It, it was more than I thought it was going to be. Mm. I thought it was going to be more expensive. Or I thought it was going to be uh, cheaper than it was. Yeah. So it's, like, it's an annual it, membership with a user or not. Like you got to just pay to get your foot in the door. Some of them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of clubs, and then there's some people, you know, celebrities that could just do it. Right, yeah. I, I can only drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I think it's a little excessive, and that was just really the thing was I was just doing luxury um, sales, and I said, you know what? I need to really think about what I'm passionate about mm-hmm. and what I want to do. And I said, you know what made me the happiest growing up was swimming. And, like, 
I was a walk-on swimmer to University of Tampa, and coach said, you got to keep your grades up. You could continue swimming, but your grades, you can't let them drop right. anything below a B, or you can't continue swimming. So that put me through college. It, it kept me the discipline aspect of keeping up with my studies and everything, not getting distracted. Um, so I, I made sure that I was keeping up with everything. Right, you yeah. had the incentive to do it. Yeah, know. yeah. Hey, Mike, do you ever turn the music down? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Starting to jam out here. Right, I know, it's, it's pretty serious. <laughs> yeah, so I had to figure out what I wanted to do mm-hmm. with the rest of my life, and I said, you know what, I'm going to just, I loved teaching swim lessons. I used to work for a YMCA um, in New Jersey growing up, and I went to people's backyard pools in Alpine, And I remember working with somebody that was blind, someone else that was deaf, some special needs, some groups, some infants. I said, this was so rewarding. And I was really good at it. It's always fun to do things you're good at, right? It is. It is. I'm just so lucky because what I, I, I work nonstop. It doesn't matter where I'm at, you know. I might take my kids, you know, to a park, I can still pull up my laptop. I can still work remotely. Sure. I, I've got a great team, great staff right now um, that allows me to do that. But I am always working, so I need to love what I do. Right. And there's nothing more than swimming, helping with water safety, and developing a passion, being able to pass on the passion and love of the sport of swimming. So how did the swim school start? Um, so I, when I decided to do swimming, was it right and I went the, to the right Red the Cross. Yep. Yeah. In 2009 is when I incorporated. So great time to start a business right when the economy collapsed. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Which, exactly. I mean, I know that hit us hard. You know, we've been yeah. open since 1987. And yeah, 2006 at the time was our best year ever. And I was mm-hmm. really on a... That was my best year ever. Yeah, we were uh, doing a lot of advertising, and I brought in even more inventory than normal for 2007, because I figured it's going to just keep going, Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we got kicked in the teeth pretty hard. Yeah. You know, thankfully, you know, um, know, our sales halved three years in a row for, you know, throughout the recession, and thankfully we've come back much better than we were in 2006, like we've blown past. Yeah. We didn't, you know, 2006, but yeah, it's it's starting. A lot of companies... Fell out. A lot of our competitors don't exist anymore. Yeah. You know? And if you're not constantly changing yeah. your business mm-hmm. philosophy, uh, well, your business um, model sure. to keep up with the times, you're not going no, to actually, be in business. I worry about people who started their companies in 2008 <laughs> and have been around from 2008 to now because they've only known good economies. You know, they've been growing for 10 years and just think this is how it is. Yeah, uh, I'm afraid that when it pops again, they're gonna be in trouble. That they're well, gonna... Let's 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 hope it doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> I, th- I think everything's a matter of time. But you decided to start a company in the middle of the recession. Yeah, but at that point, I wasn't trying to. I have a great school, small right. fish, big fish, and I. It's a community within sure. a community now. But at that point, I was going backyard to backyard mm-hmm. teaching. I didn't even have a pool at my house. Um, I didn't want one with two young kids. Even with a pool fence, I just, I know the dangers Mm -hmm. of the water. Um, And I'd rather go to a destination because as much as we supervise our children, they're quick. Sure. Especially toddlers. Yeah. Especially if you're, you know, a a, a working mom. And you're you're more than one. Yeah. 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 So I did not want a pool at home. Yeah. So I was going to people's homes or community pools and just teaching backyard lessons. Um, And it took a toll on me. You know, you walk in all these different pools and all different surfaces. And um, if you're teaching a child how to float, you're walking backwards, which is an unnatural position. So every single year, I got a stress fracture on my left foot. Wow. Yeah. And it's just because you wouldn't normally walk on your toes, but, and so, and you're walking backwards. So you're using different muscles in the body. So it kind of started taking a toll on myself. And I wanted... Is that, is that kind of injury common in swim instruction? I don't believe so. Okay. I think it was just... You're just that lucky? We, 
Yeah, so. I'm just that lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was just so many different pools right. all day long. And, you know, thank gosh I had the foresight um, because I said to myself, well, what if something happens to me? What if I get sick? How am I going to continue? Right. You know, and I also felt like I was doing some really great things and helping lots of children, but I wanted to do more. I wanted to leave more of an impact. Um, so, and I also wanted to make sure I was insured. That's one thing that a lot of um, small swim schools and mobile swim schools, they might not have liability insurance, sure. which you always want to make yeah, sure yeah. you're protected we do we do yeah, yeah. i mean you we're dealing with kids we're right. dealing with people's lives we, yeah we have to be protected and insured um so i start looking for insurance and seeing how i can afford it all and um i contacted the united states swim school association and i was able to get my liability insurance through them and the president of the association that time, his name was Jim Hazen, and he called me up. And he says, are you coming to San Diego for the conference? I'm like, I don't know if I can afford to. He goes, I don't think you can afford not to. Sold. <laughs> On a plane, I didn't know anyone. I called up the association and said, give me a roommate. Is there somebody I could split a bill with and have a, you know, stay with? And that way I meet some other people. I'd never been to California ever before. And I went there, and there was 300 people, just the most amazing, passionate people. And they inspired me to greatness. I, they continue to inspire me. Um, luckily enough, I get to see lots of those same people, you know, two, three times a year at different conferences. And I've met the most amazing friends through it. Um, and I got back from San Diego. And I went, I got a real estate attorney, uh, a, a real estate agent, an attorney, um, made sure that, you know, I ever I had everything set up. And I was just um, trying to see how I can build a pool. Could I put an above ground pool into a warehouse? Because that's all I could do. Um, I wasn't trying to go to banks and find investors right, and everything. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to teach swim lessons and have a bigger impact and be able to help train other instructors sure. um, so that they can leave an impact. Um, I found with the building code and everything, I wasn't able to do that. So it kept getting bigger and bigger. And my real estate agent found me a place right off the turnpike. Um, there was nothing in the warehouse. And... I basically, after a year and a half of negotiating and looking and researching and traveling throughout the country and looking at other swim schools, um, I, I decided this is the right place. Everything is lining up. And wheeled in those uh, bulldozers and we started and chopping up the, the floor. And that was, that was seven years ago. And, and you dug seven. a pool in a warehouse, right? Yep. I've, yep. I've been there. It's cool. Yeah. 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 Um, and, but we, we didn't just want a pool. I mean, biggest thing is, is we have to, because I want to make such an impact. I want to be able to have more people in the water. Um, so I want to make sure that our turnover rate for our filters is double what's required. Our pipes are double the size of what's required by the health department. That way that water is very, very clean because... I mean, we teach little ones as young as two months old. Wow. Um, so keeping that water as clean is important. so important right. because you're not going to have a business if, right, you don't. if, 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 if you're going to smell chlorine all the time. Sure. We, we have um, a UV system, so, which is 99% um, effective in killing the DNA molecules of crypto, okay. which is number two gotcha. so because having young children in the pool you yeah. have the risk of you know, what we say a code brown yeah um so we we want that order clean and we want it healthy um well we want to keep people healthy we don't want them to get waterborne illness so we made sure that we have 
all state-of-the-art equipment. So if something isn't optimal with our chemicals, um, which are 24 hours a day being fed in automatically, um, I get a text alert. Two, three people on my staff get a text alert. So if I need to show up at my place, I live eight miles away, at two in the morning and adjust something, I can do it or I can do it remotely um, just to ensure the safety of everyone that's entering our water. And you built the pool differently, spe specifically for the lessons too, right? Yeah, yeah, we did. So, and after after telling my little experience with hurting my Your foot, foot yeah. year, at, year after year, and I used to get little, um, little like blisters on the bottom of my toes, just okay. your skin, you're wet and you're constantly walking. Right. So basically before we filled the pool, everything, I went, every aspect of that pool, I was just, you know, going on my hands and knees and feeling if there was a rough spot because I wanted it really smooth because my staff is amazing and I need to make sure that they're comfortable because if they're not comfortable, they're not smiling. Right. And if a child's not seeing a smile when they're swimming, I don't want them to develop any fear. I want it to be a, lun a, a fun in-water learning experience, right. all positive reinforcement. Um, so all those little details, I really got to work out and look into, you know, what's the best practices um, and built my school. Um, so what about the pools different from normal pools besides the surface? The, the surface, um, just even our floor, our right. decking around it. We went to state floor. We got a variance. Okay. We put in um, a very soft, it's, it's, it's not foam, but um, bacteria can't grow on or anything. They're using it in water parks now. Um, and uh, it's actually life floor, this, okay. this material. And we put our pool deck surface as that. So we have never had to give out a Band-Aid because a child slipped and fell oh, wow. on our pool deck. That's cool. So if we have a lifeguard that's watching an activity, we're making sure they're comfortable and they can really focus on, you know, the pool or the safety of the children. When they get out, as quick as I want, my kids can move faster than my eyeballs yeah. can sometimes. So just keeping up with them and making sure that they don't slip and fall. I just, I looked at all those extra protections. Hey, and we're back. Mike's phone died. <laughs> so uh, we're going to 50 lashings for Michael. Um, but you were saying, so you didn't want kids to sit on the side? Yeah, I, don't, I didn't want the kids to sit on the side and waiting for turns. Right. And I want them in a group lesson. But I believe that children need to have the opportunity to try mm -hmm. and do stuff for themselves. So, and they need to be in the water to be learning. Sure. They need to be practicing their balance. So we have, we built our own and we bought a few of swim platforms. Okay. So the children are standing in the water, usually about chest deep, but they're in the water. So a lot of people don't know, but the center of buoyancy is right between your chest and your your le uh, your your chin, and that's because where you need to be. Is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so you need to be at that depth in the pool to really be able to feel it. So while the children are waiting turns, and they're not waiting long because our class sizes are small, our teachers are phenomenal, and they keep the kids moving. So they're burning off energy, they're increasing their heart rate. It's physical education as well. Um, as I'm learning um, life-saving skills. Right. Yeah. So that's cool. So, yeah. So that's one thing that we really pride ourselves on is keeping those kids moving, keeping them learning, keeping it fun. We have all kinds of primary colors. A lot of infants don't, you know, they pretty much see like black and white, and then they start seeing colors. So that's why we see a lot of baby toys that are those, you know, red and blue and bright, brighter colors. And we're able to um, engage all of those kids. And, you know, every two to three minutes, we're bringing out a different toy, like maybe one child holding a ball or a fish. Um, this month it's Halloween, so they're holding a pumpkin. Nice. Um, but we, we take a little bit more of a Montessori approach. So yeah. we, we might be in the corner of uh, the pool, and we might have a swim uh, platform right next to the wall. So one child is, stand, is standing on a platform. We're saying, okay, swim over to the wall. Um, 
give Mr. Pumpkin a tickle, right. and then, you know, choo-choo train, chugga-chugga-choo-choo, and kids are blowing bubbles while they're doing it, and they're learning how to safely walk around the pool using their hands. Um, if they fell in, we need them to turn right back to the wall or turn over and float on their back. Um, as life-saving skills so we're getting them going or we might um, have we might give them a little banana and I'm talking it's like a fingernail and they've got to go to the wall put in the monkey's mouth and then they 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 go back along the edge and then they come right back to the platform and they have to walk ar across the platform we also teach adults how to swim first thing before we teach any adult is we teach them to walk in the pool Okay. There's no gravity right. in water. We know gravity. We didn't know it when we were first when, when yeah. we spent nine months in mom's belly, right. but we come out and we learn gravity. Um, so in the water, there is none. So that can produce fear. So we need to take the time and make sure that the children uh, or adults, any age, everybody has the basics. They know their balance. They know their breath control. Um, they know how to, to move in the water. Yeah. I can actually walk in the water. Of of course you yeah, can. Right? I it's, kinda cool. it's yeah. I have the opportunity to work with so many people, um and you know, a lot of we we have a handicap lift as well at our pool. That's cool. We have so many um children and adults that come in for therapy, um um and w can't walk on land but can walk in the pool. Right. And are, you know, can even be feeling pain out of the water because of gravity but you get in that pool and you can move in so many positions and strengthen your muscles it's just it's amazing it's i don't just, think i've ever had a doctor not recommend water therapy I mean, it's kind of universal across the yeah. board everyone agrees that's the thing but the water is healing and no matter how old you are whether you're two months old or you're 102 only sport there is that you can do your entire life. Yeah. A lot of times we might have some children that might drop out of our program and because they're going to go to football. And if they can't swim, we just want to let the parents know. Um, no one's drowned on the football field or, you know, ballet lessons. Right. But that's why it's so important to learn those safety skills, learn how to respect the water. Um, one thing we do is we invite the children in for their lesson, they're not allowed to enter the pool until we've invited them in. So at our school, we work on that discipline um, aspect of it, and we take kind of that Montessori approach so that kids can self-direct themselves depending upon which toys they want to play with or, you know, what objects they like. Um, and we gear and we customize the lessons to that child, even though it's a group session. Um, so really fun it's really awesome um so you said uh you talked about two months old so what ages do you start at we start at eight weeks eight weeks and you might see me on facebook with children younger right um i'm taking i, I like to wait until they're eight weeks because typically they've had their 14 day, day checkup they've had their um you know one month two month checkup they've gotten some of the basic shots um the doctors also knowing if there's any type of respiratory issues. I always say check right. with the doctor. Well, I'm a I'm an aquatic educator. I'm a swim instructor. Right. I listen to whatever your doctor says. Um, you're, you're not also a physician. You know, no, 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 I'm not. I'm yeah. not insurance <laughs> uh, insurance fraud investigator. I'm not. You yeah. Out on that amazing I life. I did. <laughs> it sounded really cool back then. I, I think it's. I think it would still be interesting yeah, for. That. I. I think it was like we had different people come in and talk about different type of careers, and I mean, it is kind that of was like, really like being like a <laughs> like a detective, but without having to deal with actual criminals. You know, you got to solve cases. You know, I, I yeah, get it. Yeah, I, I see it. I want to be, I want to be safer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just in general. <laughs> yeah. Insurance, yes. water safety. Exactly. All the way around. Yes. Yeah. Vehicles doesn't matter. Vehicles, right? <laughs> yeah. Vehicles. For Airbags. Yeah. Airbags. Yeah. Yeah. I'm proud of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I really had the opportunity, though. I'm so grateful that I took the time, made sure I met some of the 
awesome people throughout this country and world that are very successful in their swim schools and really was able to take all those ideas and thoughts and bring them back to my school and take the time building it. Um, so, so what can you teach a chumadol as far as water safety? So, Smith. And we actually, we call it brain bond, um, uh, brain development and uh, bond, uh, bonding classes. Okay. Um, we do have the parents in the pool because mm-hmm. we want them to feel the love. And most of the time it's dads that are in the water with the children. The okay. m- mom maybe not want to get into the water right after giving birth. Um, sure. Not, But we do have a lot, sure. which is phenomenal. Um but dads can't wait to do sports with their kids. They want to throw a football or a baseball or play games. And so this is that physical opportunity to actually move within the water with their children. And we're, we're taking the children. We're very zenful. We're, we're going back and forth and just swaying them, letting the water run from the top of their head all the way down to their feet. And we're having the babies. We're crossing um, midline, crossing meridians. And it's actually helping, all that movement's helping connect the synapses in the brain. So there's this great study out of Australia um, that children that participate in swim lessons um, do better in fine motor skills. I heard that, Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Griffith study, and they do better in fine motor skills, better in music, better in math, um, just because they're using both hemispheres of the brain. And it's all happening at a younger age. No, it's one thing, I think that should be part of the advertising or however you want to put it about swim instruction in general. You know, we all know you should do it to help the kid save himself if he or she ever has to, you know, in the event of an accident. But people yeah. people wrongly say, well, I watch my kid, you know, that'll never happen to me. But everyone wants their kid to be smarter, right, across the board. Everyone yes. wants their kid to be better in school. Yes. They want them to, you know, live a better life and have their brain synapses fire better. And, and swimming's the vehicle to do does, it. Swimming does that, you know? and it will help them when they're young, as well as when they're old. It's 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 just so crucial. So our main thing is that they're they're developing that passion, and that it's a positive. It's a, nothing's traumatic um, during those lessons. We do we we don't even charge. That's how important we think it is. We we do it free. For under six month olds, so two to six month olds, um, I was saying we don't start earlier because they the children's um, for their development, their head they might not be holding their head up, right. right? So usually about seven eight weeks is when they get head control. So we've got a lot of first time parents, and they I don't want them to accidentally be dropping their child in the in the pool right. um, and having them swallow all this water and everything. Yeah. So that's why predominantly one of the reasons we wait to the eight weeks, as well as we want the umbilical cord completely dry okay. and off to prevent any type of um, infection. We, we want to make it, you know, as safe. Painless as possible. Yeah. Well, safe. Yeah. 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 And that's just, you know, that's just the basics of what we need to do. Um, if the parents are comfortable with it, we will have those children um, start experiencing breath control. Um, one of the w- ways that I introduce breath control, well, we're born with reflexes. Mm-hmm. When we're in womb, we're not swallowing. Right. Um, so we're, we're born, you know, coming from water. So if we're going back right into it, we have what's called the dive reflex. The children will automatically hold their breath when put under. But we always go to a second layer as well. So and what age does the dive reflex go away, by the way? Does that wear out at a certain age? Yeah, and every child's different. So like a year, 18 months, something like that? Yeah, but we, we I see it in two and a half year olds as okay. well. So when we put them under, um, they, when a child holds their breath, if, if, if I took a washcloth and I put right over um, child's face, you're going to see them. Their eyes going to go like this, and they're going to start pumping their legs and moving their arms, just like they would do when they were swimming. Right. So the parents get really excited, and but their children's doing all this movement. But they don't realize that's a reflex. We're born to be able to do that. Born to swim. Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
I explain the breath control part to the parents. I ask all, because I want them to feel it. I need the parents to understand it um, if we're going to be putting their infants underwater. So I ask them to turn their head to the side. Mm -hmm. We'll do it. And try to swallow. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little hard. Then I ask them to turn their chin to their chest. And, swall and, and swallow. It's really difficult. Um, just really what's swallow. the first thing you would? Do? <laughs> what's the first that. thing you would have to do if you had to do CPR? Yeah, you tilt your head back. You would open up the right. airway. Yeah. So as we're teaching breath control, we're relying on that dive reflex, but we're also going secondary, and we're saying, okay, we're going to have for that second too that they're going to go underwater gently. Um, we're going to have them not swallowing water because we're going to put them in a position under where that airway is actually being closed. So we're either going to go one, two, three, nice and soft. We take them under and then they come up and they face their parents and they see their eyeballs. Babies interact with their moms or dads. They look you could tell your baby whatever they're not understanding at two two to six months of age but they can communicate with their parents through their eyeballs they learn they know if their parents scared or not right I, and i do we we work with fearful parents i say mom dad keep your eyeballs in yeah, you yeah. know i want that to be a fun in water learning experience so they come up and they see their parents and their parents smile and babies are born to please and they're born without fear. So we're work so the younger that children start, the better. So they're seeing mom and dad and they're smiling. And guess what? At you know, three, four months of age, those kids are smiling. You start to go and you like blow a raspberry, the kids will start imitating it five and six years of age. So if you're doing that smile, the child's going to do it. And then we bring them in for a hug. And you know, they they can it's a bonding experience. I mean, you know, there's all this research out there. Um, you know, children that don't get physical touch, you know, can grow up with neurological problems right. later. Um, so we just take all that child psychology right into our lessons, right into our curriculum. Um, and there's many schools out there across the country that are doing things like this. But um, just making sure that we take the time and they've got proper breath control before we have them ever fall face down, uh, uh, feet first into a pool or anything like that. So we either put them under like this or to the side. And then at what age do you start actually training, rolling over and floating and that kind of thing? We start it right away. Right, and right so, months. yeah, we yeah. do. So, and we're not going to do lots of submergence. Right. We'll do, you know, two or three just introductory, uh, introductory for the parents and so they can understand it so they're not scared but and then we'll work a lot of the time we're just spent swaying but if you're on your back we we have parents just hold the back of the head look into the baby's eyes again so much communication can happen eye to eye and so we're looking down at those uh infants and mom and dad are cooing kissing their their head holding the head and they're walking backwards and it's it feels so good if somebody's holding your head and you're just kind of swaying in the water you're able to get so much movement into the body it's it's amazing and so those parents are starting right away with the floating um and then as they grow you know we have babies you know four and a half five months old floating by themselves but we don't right at that point a child is not an immediate danger of, uh, I have to be careful saying this, but uh, not as drowning, yeah, yeah, they're not craw they're not walking yet. Right. They're not even, typically well, children are not crawling not well, under six months yeah. of age. You know, that's a little bit later, but I've seen it. Yeah. We've got great kids, you know. <laughs> we've, we've got nine-month-olds walking, you future, know. Future Olympians, yeah. Yeah, who knows? possibilities endless yeah, i had somebody <laughs> say you know well, what if my you know two-year-old can climb over your your five-foot pool fence i said well then that kid should go in the olympics and you should sign them up for the nfl in every sport that exists uh, i mean it's possible i'm sure it's happened but uh your kid's an athlete and congratulations <laughs> you know, yeah. well you know i loved 
my I, I love watching children problem solve. Right. If if a child wants something bad enough, they're gonna find a way. Yeah. They're going to take a chair and just push sure. it yeah. over to that pole fence and climb over. It, it's a barrier of protection. Right. I mean, our, our number one thing is, you know, adult supervision. Right. That's number one key. Then we need to have safer water. We need those pool fences, pool arms. We need um, to make sure, you know, we've got self-latching gates. We need to make sure we've got alarms on our doors if the children get out of the house. Right. Um, but here in Florida, we're surrounded by water as well. Sure. So, um, unfortunately, there's not a pool fence around every body of water. Uh, unfortunately, right? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm getting there. Yeah. I want to fence the ocean. It's always work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, That's the wall I want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the second barrier of protection is safer um, kids. kids. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, CDC put out a statement that children that are actively involved in swim lessons are 88% less likely to drown. Yeah. So, that's huge. Absolutely. You know, and then... Our third layer of protection is safer response. Yep. Parents need to know CPR. I mean, whether it's around an aquatic environment or anywhere, we could pull up on scene of a car and no CPR. There, there was this viral U, uh, YouTube video went around of this baby choking in um, in the garden small recently. Oh no, I didn't see it. I, it happened several months ago, and it, it was right here local, um, but. You know, everybody came over, they did the back slaps, and they were able to get uh, the back thrust, and they were able to get the object removed from That's the child. Awesome. But unless you have that training or you're exposed to it, right. some, whether they're exposed in a movie or, um, you know, just being able to um, know how to remove an object right. or be able to start compressions or rescue breaths is just key. So we want, at, especially at our school, we, we make sure that everybody knows that those are the you know layers of protection to follow um to keep their kids safer a lot of times i get parents that come to me and they say oh is my is my kid safe and i said there is no such thing they can become safer we recently had a family um this in february they moved um to west palm and they had moved from texas where there was flooding and they didn't have a pool there or anything, but the flooding was coming into their house and their two-year-old was stuck standing on the couch until they were able to be rescued. That's scary. Yeah. That's scary. Seriously. So um, we're never safe, but we can be safer. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, you can put airbags and seat belts and, you know, roll cages into a car and it's safer, yep. mm -hmm. but, you know, it's still... It's not perfectly safe. You're still driving a car. Yeah. yeah. Another thing people don't realize is that more more children uh, die from drowning than yeah. car accidents. Absolutely. Yeah. Number you one. Know? Accidental and we spend before. so much time on car seats. On car seats. And, you know? I I hope our country takes a position. Um, I, I think the work that you're doing is amazing. You're providing. All these people from aquatic backgrounds, you know, to talk to the public. Um, hopefully, doctors around the country. Yeah. I think Carrie Morrison locally is really pushing. She did that study, um, which yeah, I talk about all the time. I feel like yeah. I mention it literally every time yeah. I do this. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's great. Just, it doesn't matter, type of swim lesson or anything. Uh, parents need the education. They need to know how to keep their children safe. Right. They get it from the learning about the car seats, but... They're, we're missing the aquatic yeah, factor. Yeah, eighty five percent of doctors don't mention any kind of water safety yep. to, to children. You know, yeah. or, you know, when kids come in. I spoke right. with my staff. Half of them right. have children, right. um, and they all looked at me when I told them that because all the local doctors yeah. here are. They say, oh, oh, "Oh, at the one at, at the one year old checkup, they're asking at the two year old," okay. and it is a question. Um, so I don't know. I I think we're moving in the right direction yeah. when my kids were one and two i didn't get asked that question so i'm not really sure how that's working throughout the country i know locally here it's my good. children's doctor and my staffs my employees doctors have brought it up but there's still there's still so much we can do 
It's right. it's hard for them though because they might be seeing so many patients and, and all the, day long. And the list of things they need to cover is you know it's immense. It's immense. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. There's only and you only have so much time and yeah. Um, Mike, did your uh, doctor mention anything about water safety? No, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. I'm going for the six month checkup next week. Okay. Mm. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Find out. Yeah. And I think they wait maybe until they're mobile because there's m- not many people will do swim lessons for under six months old right they're just scared they haven't been educated sure. on the benefits you know it's not even that they're against it they just they just don't know, they just don't know. right so that's that's where my that's where i come alive right. i just i want to tell the world i want to yeah. you know i want to say look at the benefits it's just it's amazing you know right. what there's nothing better we can do for yeah, especially our children with the, especially with the neurological benefits and you know yeah. it, it's huge yeah. you know yeah. Um, so you were recently elected um, to the U.S. Swim School Association Board, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So so much of my success, I contribute to the United States Swim right, School Association. Yeah, and um, I uh, I'm so fortunate because now I get to give back and right. help others, um, and you know, leave a larger impact. Um, and it's a lot of work. How long have you been on the board? No? Just uh, just in September. Oh, okay. we we yeah, yeah yeah. So I'm looking forward to the work. Yeah, I like working. Working gives me a reason to, to, to live. Yeah. I, yeah, I um. One year after I opened my business, and and I said I I had somehow I had some insight and um, idea that I needed to be able to impact more people. So um, I had found a lump in my breast. And I had gone to a doctor, um, and they I had a mammogram done, and they said we see that lump, but we're gonna follow up in six months. Okay. Um, and then I went back to the doctor again, had another mammogram. Uh, well, I'm sorry, they called me up right away, and they said we're gonna do another mammogram, and we're gonna do an ultrasound. And you're young. Which is always the last thing you want to hear, though. Yeah. I needed that reassurance right. though, because something in my gut said something wasn't okay. Um, so I, I had all those tests done. I went back again and then I had them all done again, but I said, you know what? I need to go check with a breast surgeon. So I went to a local doctor up in Jupiter and he goes, I don't care about the mammogram you just had two days ago. I'm going to feel it and we're going to do an ultrasound. All as he did was take the ultrasound machine, the cancer was right here. He took it an inch and a half up into my armpit. And I said, what's that? And I could tell he's measuring stuff. I said, right. what's that? He said, that's your lymph nodes. Mm-hmm. So am I supposed to have them? He goes, just not that big. And I start crying. Um, next morning, he opened up his office. He did a biopsy. The following night, he called me up on Friday night, 8 o'clock at night, and said, yes, it was cancer. Mm-hmm. So I had just opened my swim school one year new, and what, what it's this? life altering. 2013. So okay. I'm five years in remission. Nice. Yeah. So I'm just I'm ecstatic because I'm on track to leave a legacy and leave an impact, and that's just this is way bigger than me or just a, my just just our local community right. country it this we the water so healing just the impact that we can make through education is just tremendous so luckily i had that hindsight i was building myself the school where we can be the vehicle and do all of that so, um, so that was challenging right. because I went through six months of chemo sure. and there was days I was too sick to get in the water, but I was able, I would say the babies and the children that I work with allowed me to get better. They kept my mind sane. They kept my heart sane. Um, so I have so much to be thankful for. And the s- members of the United States Swim School Association throughout the country um, were sending me just, um, you know, gifts or something inspiring. 
um, a card every single week in the mail. And I just said, what a one, th there's nothing like swimmers. They're just, they're just, I'm sorry, I'm biased, <laughs> but they're just good people or typically yeah. phenomenal people. So, um, I've just been, been inspired and I'm fortunate, very fortunate. It's awesome. Well, you know, I know from, you know, being on the board of the NDPA, it's a, it's a lot of work yeah. and it's a lot of energy. So you know, I'm sure they'll appreciate how many, how many people are on the board there? Uh, there's seven of us. Okay. Now. So not yeah. that many. Yeah. No, no. But, yeah. but there is, uh, 500 swim schools across the yeah. country and, uh, we have members from 17 different countries, Crazy. part of it. So that's, what's really great is, you know, last Actually, beginning of September, I was over in Mexico City, and I was there, and there's a swim school over there uh, with four locations, and they flew in an aquatic expert uh, educator from Portland area to do a training, and people from China flew in, and so we had all this diverse language going on and translators, because over in China, the birth rate is just expanding You're, right. you you can have more than one child so right. there's a lot of new swim schools opening but they're not surrounded by water right like we are here sure. in florida so you know you got to really be able to a lot of those instructors can they they can't even you know they don't know how to they don't have any background in breath control but you can teach it all you know but you you've got to want to and you got to you gotta be a charismatic person. You gotta, you well, know, like anything yeah. else, right? If you're yes, not, if you're not exactly. Doing it, if you don't you gotta be passionate. It, then you know it's not gonna work at all. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I know um, we've been combating this for years. You know, the American Academy of Pediatrics mm -hmm. used to say under five, uh, but now I think it's two. Right? Is their their age recommendation? I don't believe that they have a recommendation. It's just they changed in 2009. Okay. It used to say that children under the age of five. four. I was five. Oh, five. Oh, five. Yeah. Okay. That could have been that, in the 90s when I read that the first time. You know. Yeah. It's, there are so many statistics yeah. out I, there. Because I remember yeah. writing an article in you know, oh, okay. 1995. And I I'm going to Google it yeah, and I, see. Because I, <laughs> I said, you know, most kids drown before, you know, between ages one and four. So if you wait because till, they're starting to walk right. and explore, so and you, they've got low creative minds. Right. So if you wait till five, which is what it's the AAP suggests, most kids have died already. You know, it's yeah. it's too late. You know, all the wet kids are gonna drown and drown. Yeah. Um. And I know a, a big thing was ear infections. That was their. You yeah. Know, you, know, you don't want to put the kid in the water; they're gonna get an ear infection. Yeah. And I used to tell people like you'd rather have an ear infection than a you know a drowning. Um, yeah. I mean, but do you see a lot of that? Is that even a thing? I mean, we have so many children in our school that swim with earplugs. Um, but so, and I'm speaking from experience here right. again. Yeah. I'm not a doctor. Right. But, um, but, 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 I mean, but my, but your my, sample size is pretty large too, you know? Yes. I mean, yes. You're, you're yeah. Seeing, yeah. I mean, we see thousands of kids six, every year. 600 kids a week? Probably. 600 kids a week currently right. is what we have at swimming in our school. Which is amazing. Now, you know, this yeah. time of year in winter. Yeah. Uh, well, approaching the winter that season. Florida winter. Fall. Florida winter, yeah. yeah. Still gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. it, it was, it's, it's finally not ridiculously hot out. Yeah. Like, I can get out of my car. But like, like today, I actually was like, oh, it's kind of, it's not cool, but it's not hot. It's like <laughs> some kind of nice middle ground deal yeah. that I'm appreciative yeah. of. I, it's gorgeous. I, yeah. You should come to Florida. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the best. <laughs> I love Florida. But so, but the 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 parents come in and they say. So, another thing with floating is, in order to float, your ears do need to be submerged right. under the water. So, because if they're not, your your head's out of the water, your butt's gonna sink. Right, your posture's wrong. Yeah, you're you're in the wrong position. Um, so we need them horizontal. So their ears do need to be in. And so that's a big question from the parents. And the truth is that children are more likely to get an ear infection in the bath or the shower because they're washing their hair and the soap suds can get in the ear. And then there's going to be, then bacteria might grow. Um, whereas in the pool, if it's properly chemically treated, we're, we're, we're killing most you know, things. Yeah. most things. Yeah. So there's that aspect of it. And a lot of parents also don't realize a lot of times um, that the way I had an ENT explain it to me um, was 
that if you're given oral antibiotics, mm -hmm. it's an inner ear infection. Okay. Swimmer's ear is your outer ear. Got it. So the, those inner ear infections that we see that children are get so commonly are because they've got a cold. They're teething, and they got your you station tubes when you're an adult are a lot bigger, but when you're little, they're just so small, so easy for them to get clogged, and you get that buildup, and you get very an impressive. inner ear. But if you're getting oral antibiotics. Um, we know it's inner ear, so that's not your outer ear gotcha. infection. So that's like, a really... I guess eardrops would be outer ear, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most commonly. Um, again, I'm, that's, that's just my experience. And when every one of my clients I've talked to, because I'm always engaging, yeah. the moms, again, community within a community, and we're always talking, you know, what school's great, you know, you, which ear, nose, and throat doctor you go into, sure. you know, is this safe for my child and you know which pool fence company should i pick yeah, yours <laughs> yeah i mean we 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 have your sign in our lobby oh, and cool. our clients come to us all the time and they ask and they pick it up that's that's what's so cool about our schools the parents are picking up the materials that we leave out that's awesome. and then they're asking and our front desk saying you know call her call casey <laughs> right. you know go get them my neighbors just had a, a, a pool and fence installed by you guys and nice. you guys have come out to our world's largest swim lesson and just you guys are giving back within the community and um we try you, you're doing a great job of well, it. thank you yeah. <laughs> so. so what's a, a common question that parents ask you or the most common what can i do to help my child at home okay because like anything repetition is key sure so Yes, it's warm year-round in Florida. However, a lot of people stop swimming come October because the water temperature drops outside. Yeah. yeah, and most pools are not heated. Right. So if they're not in the water and they're not being able to practice, they will lose what they've learned. Um, and a growing child, you know, they, they say children grow two inches per year on average. Yeah. And I think it's even more accelerated when they're little, sure. uh, when they're infants and babies. So their sense of buoyancy changes. So it's in, so important for children to continue year round right. lessons because they're growing. So they might learn how to float six months ago, but then they haven't experienced it recently. So that's another thing is a, a lot of, uh, a lot of community pools will, offer lessons you know two weeks and the parents say we did swim lessons or my kid my kid can put their head underwater and they could swim at the bottom of the pool they know how to swim well there's a lot more right. to it i want to know if your child fell in could they save themselves yeah if your kid you know? can't get up and take a breath they're not swimming they're just yeah drowning quickly and, forward you know? and that's the other thing is is i don't want them just to come up and get a breath because right. they can fall in come up uh, maybe they're bouncing off the bottom they're coming up for a breath they're getting that one breath but unless they're then comfortable enough to put their head back underwater and blow bubbles because exhale now you relax but if you're in a fearful situation right there you right. can't do that so they come up <gasps> and as they're taking another breath of air they start swallowing that water and they're in that vertical position right. so i i personally um like to have people adults and children turn over and float right. if you get pulled out into a rip current in the ocean you you turn over and float let it pull you out right and then swim perpendicular back right. to shore get out of the rip current first so but i i want people floating yeah yeah, yeah floating's good for everybody yeah. it's the safest thing to do exactly you know. you're, you're not using as much energy you fall off a boat right you can flow. Hopefully, Coast Guard's coming soon. Yeah. Hopefully, you're wearing a Coast Guard-approved life yeah. jacket. Right. But I'm not even going all, the open all water. there. Yeah. But the, the the parents want to help their children succeed. So we tell them that let the children play. Have that have that opportunity to feel the buoyancy. Feel how they're going to float up. Practice their balance. So we tell them put a ring on the stairs. Put a ring on the bottom. And let the children, and you be there right there with them, obviously supervising them. 
but let them experience it. Their their positive reinforcement is picking up that ring, and they're happy. You know, you get toddlers saying, "I did it, mommy! I did it!" and it's just they're they're so proud. And then they get the parents' reinforcement. It's it's. I think it's magical. <laughs> but being able to experiment and have that child do it for themselves and they're self-initiating it, that's the number one thing. They're also, the deeper they're putting it, the more they're challenging themselves and the more they're expanding their lung capacity. Right. And, you know, then we're getting into all the benefits of that. It's just, it's great. <laughs> all the cardiovascular benefits yes. on top yeah. of the, the neural synapses. and Ye- Yep. <laughs> plus the life-saving skills on top yes. of it. Yes. Yes. So what should someone look for if they're looking for a swim school? Say if they don't live in West Palm and they live in yeah. Minnesota somewhere and they want to get yeah. a swim school. Find a swim school. Find swim mm-hmm. lessons. Get your children started as young as they can. Mm-hmm. Fear is learned. You're not born with fear. Um, but make sure the water is good. Ask to see pool records, their chemicals, because right. you don't want to get in a pool and end up with chemical burn yeah, or anything no. like that, right. or it's it's dirty or any of that. Yeah. So that's just your basics. Look for people that are insured. <laughs> I mean, again, we got to protect ourselves. Um, I say, see how much training and education those teachers have. Right. You know, there's all, there's American Red Cross, there's... You know, there, there's so many different curriculums right. out there. Um, and some have, you know, great things and some don't. I don't know. Just yeah. get them get them in the water. Get them learning. Um, having that experience. Let them have the repetition. Let it be positive. You know, trauma-free. I don't, I, I hate seeing a child just in pure panic you know arched back water coming over their face and hand you know fists are like this if a child's in the pool and they're all screaming crying you know it doesn't justify the means we 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 can build their confidence because in the long run they're going to succeed and just be happier better individuals in life makes sense yeah where'd you go with the name Small fish, big fish? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I actually, when I first created my website, it was like 2 in the morning. I was looking um, for what I was going to call, call the school. Right. And so I had to find a domain. Right. So, you know, little fish, big fish, I think, was taken. And so small fish, big fish, it ended up being. Because I don't want to discriminate and say we're only for infants we're only for children we're only for adults i want again i want to leave an impact i want it to be a community and i want to be able to serve the entire right. community Makes so sense. we don't turn anyone away i don't care if somebody has a feeding tube has seizures we we can't walk it, it makes no difference water is medicine it's healing it's just the benefits of swimming are just, they go on and on. <laughs> so how can people find you? Um, well, it's Small Fish, Big Fish, right. Swim School. Dot com. Um, dot com, yep. yes. <laughs> uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, all the, all the, stuff. All, all the social media platforms. Right. Um, our phone number is 818-SWIM-7946. That's 561-818-7946. Okay, there you go. 7946. Um, you know, and word of mouth, and we're, we're we want everybody. Nice. <laughs> um, but if uh, you've got a broad reach, mm-hmm. you know, even international, but sure. you know, I would recommend people go to United States Swim School Association, look for swim schools in their area. They can search by zip code. Go to Australian Swim School Association for all your friends over there. Right. Um, there's international swim schools. It, it, every country's got in, in in Canada. You know they have the Canadian Red Cross. There's so many different options out there. Sure. Um, you know, but do your research. Not all programs are created equal, right. and not all every child's different. So somebody might succeed in one program but not in another. And if they're not, then don't stop. A, a lot of times people say, "I need to take a break," you know, and continue on but just slow it down make sure 
your child has that confidence and continue on because it's just it's so important makes good sense yeah perfect well thank you so much thank you thanks for coming down here awesome thanks for doing the first one in my office that's kind of cool yeah yeah did you tell me this is your 50th this is our 50 you're right thank you for yeah you congrats yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would have forgot that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so it's number 50. It's in the office. We're going to eventually have like a shelf here or something. We're going to put tchotchkes up here besides Groot. Groot, I always like to have Groot around. That's Groot right there. <laughs> baby Groot. Ready for Halloween. Yeah, baby Groot. Groot. Yeah. yeah. But, well, I look yeah. forward to watching everybody else Aww. you bring on. You bring a great, diverse Thanks. group of people. And Yeah, we try to do phenomenal. anything child safety yeah. related. That's the yeah. plan, you know. Just education. That's the idea. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.